Holy crap, Twitch just changed everything. They removed all exclusivity. We can all multi-stream now. Twitch partners get paid in Bitcoin and all because Twitch is terrified of YouTube. Yeah, that's uh, not true, is it? But streamer Twitter doesn't have the ability to read. And like what happens every single time Twitch makes an update, they've completely misunderstood what that update is and are now spreading misinformation. So let's talk about how Twitch just changed their exclusivity rules for streamers, what it all means, and of course, what is in it for you while clearing up some strange misinformation out there. Hey, I'm LJ with streamscheme.com. I'm also a variety streamer and YouTuber. There are links to both those in the description as well as time codes. So you can skip ahead to whatever part of this video you want and then go out and spread half of the information without context and be misinformed. Also, because it's a very long video with a lot of detail to cover. But if you want to understand the new rules and why it is so important that you understand the new rules, first we have to explain what the old rules were for both Twitch affiliates and Twitch partners. Let's first talk about affiliates. Once you accept the affiliate agreement, there are certain rules you are agreeing to follow. That is because it is a contract and that is why you should read it. When it comes to exclusivity, the major rule you needed to know was that you cannot, as an affiliate, multi-stream. Again, as an affiliate, you cannot multi-stream. Multi-streaming is when you go live on Twitch and the same stream is being broadcast over on YouTube, Facebook, or multiple other platforms, for example. Twitch partners, so creators like myself with that little purple badge, had to follow this rule as well, unless they'd negotiated a unique contract. Now, there is a lot of debate out there about whether or not you watching this would actually get in trouble for multi-streaming and whether Twitch can even find you doing it in the first place. And if they did find you, whether they can actually enforce the rules on you. And we can cover all of that. First, we need to finish this part because it's important to understand what is being changed. So that is the easy to understand rule. No multi-streaming for anyone. The second major exclusivity rule is honestly quite simple as well, but based on the Twitter replies I got, not many affiliates actually understand it. Heck, there is even a huge debate about Twitch partners and this rule now. So first, as an affiliate, are you forced to create all live content exclusive only to Twitch? No, actually, and it's never been the case. You see, Twitch affiliates have always been able to go live on other platforms like YouTube or Facebook as well. As long as, remember, they aren't multi-streaming. This means you could end your Twitch stream and go start up a YouTube stream without breaking any rules. Now, a lot of people say that you can just break this rule and multi-stream without getting in trouble because Twitch can't enforce it. Personally, I'm not gonna give you that advice because I don't wanna tell you to break the terms of service and then be held accountable if you do get in trouble. I can't guarantee anything will go a certain way for you. It's up to you to make that choice and risk what you wanna risk. Now, for Twitch partners, this rule becomes a bit messier. From reading my contract, talking to other partners, and most importantly, a dozen or so Twitch partner managers, Twitch partners have to create their live content exclusive to Twitch. We couldn't end our Twitch stream and go start up a YouTube stream without breaking the rules. They did this to retain talent, essentially. If we have to stream on Twitch, our viewers have to watch on Twitch. It isn't overly creator friendly, to be honest. And there has been a lot of push to change this rule over the recent years. But why does this get messy when we start talking about partners? Well, that is because there is now debate out there from a creator and marketer who I respect greatly, Devin Nash, saying partners could always go live on other platforms the same as affiliates. But from experience, every partner I know has been told that this isn't the case. We aren't allowed to. And releasing this change leads me to feel even Twitch didn't think that this was allowed either. Otherwise, why bother releasing the update? Rather than debate about the old rules, let's move forward and say that is what people thought the rules were. No multi-streaming for anyone. Affiliates could go live on other platforms, but sadly, partners couldn't. Or again, we were told and thought that we couldn't. So what has changed? What are the new rules? Why does this change help you watching this? And of course, what is crucial that you have to know? Let's talk partners first, since that is where the debate is, and then I will cover affiliate for you. With the new changes, Twitch partners are no longer forced or have to think they're forced to be Twitch exclusive. We can now end stream and go live on YouTube or Facebook, for example, without breaking the rules or being banned from Twitch. One thing that has not been completely opened up though is multi-streaming. Twitch partners still cannot multi-stream while on Twitch to YouTube or Facebook, but Twitch is allowing you to multi-stream to what they call short format or mobile services, which means TikTok or Instagram Live. Now, I will break down what all of this means and why I think they're doing it in a second, because it really does impact every streamer. 
But first, we have to show you the affiliate changes. Because when I first tweeted out the changes, a screenshot of the Twitch FAQ for these changes, and a link to the FAQ, the first replies I got from everyone were, Is this just for partners? What about affiliates? Wait, I can multi-stream now? Which hurt my soul a little bit. Because this update, it changes nothing for affiliates. I'm really sorry. They're only changing things for Twitch partners. But before you go complain in the comments, I have one small bonus for you. Nothing is changing because you could already do all of this. If I learned two things from this tweet, the first is that not a single affiliate who replied read their Twitch contract or has been told a lot of misinformation about what they can and can't do. And if you don't believe me, go read any thread about these changes and you'll see what I mean. Even Twitch had to change their FAQ page for the partner exclusivity changes because affiliates were harassing them on social media about why they didn't get the changes as well. Despite, again, being able to do everything already, this change gives partners. But what does all this mean and why does this, despite not technically changing anything for affiliates, still affect every single streamer? What's in it for you, essentially? And why the f*** would Twitch release exclusivity and risk losing all their streamers? Let's tackle that last question first. As I mentioned earlier, Twitch has been under a bit of pressure these past few years to be more creator focused. There are many examples of this from general exclusivity complaints, but also when creators like Ludwig left Twitch for YouTube, they quoted the major reason was, Twitch wasn't looking out for them despite being a giant creator. Twitch wasn't creator focused. This idea has really permeated across the entire industry now and streamers love to spread that Twitch isn't creator focused. And that is really bad for Twitch. Whether you believe it's true or not, just the concept that that is what people think is bad. So the first reason, but not the biggest reason they are changing is because it is an amazing PR move. This makes everyone feel like Twitch cares about their creators and they want them to be free to grow or stream wherever they want to and wherever is best for them. But if that isn't the major reason, what is? Well, it becomes quite obvious when you read the rules I mentioned about multi-streaming. You can't multi-stream to YouTube or Facebook. Ignore the part where Twitch then says two streams at once can lead to a suboptimal experience for your community. They don't really care about that. The reality is YouTube and Facebook are just Twitch's direct competitors in the live space. After all, if they cared about suboptimal experiences, then why are Twitch allowing you to multi-stream to what they call short format or mobile services, remember? Which means TikTok and Instagram Live. Great question again. You see, TikTok has a wild market share of viewers and an algorithm that aggressively blows people up who make good, consistent content for it. YouTube isn't really the go-to growth tool these days for creators. It's the best for monetization and long-term sustainability. That's undeniable. But when it comes to initial growth for someone brand new, understanding the TikTok algorithm and pushing that is far more powerful. Listening to me right now, small creators, the TikTok algorithm is far more powerful. Twitch is making this change because they want streamers to go live on Twitch and TikTok at the same time and then promote their Twitch stream to bring viewers across from TikTok. So, sorry, I just, oh, I, sorry. just I don't mean to interrupt okay. LJ, but I just have to ask, why would someone who's multi-streaming on Twitch and mm -hmm. TikTok promote their mm. Twitch stream over their TikTok stream yeah. and why would a viewer bother coming across? I'm really glad you asked. So streamers will promote their Twitch stream because it is far better for monetization than TikTok is. And viewers will come across because TikTok live viewing right now is a terrible experience with an aggressively low retention rate. Twitch currently is just a far better viewing experience than TikTok. Of course, not every viewer will come across, but a percentage will. And when we're talking about how quickly you can blow up on TikTok to have thousands of viewers, those percentages matter. So those are the two big reasons Twitch is changing this. It is an amazing PR move that makes us think, yes, go Twitch. And it gives them a chance to gain more market share in the live space by trying to bring viewers from TikTok over to Twitch. Here is the thing though. Twitch streamers and partners have been multi-streaming to TikTok for years. And Twitch has sort of been okay with it because they know it actually helps them get more viewers on their platform. These changes just make it so they don't have to pretend not to see it anymore. And instead, can give you a big thumbs up and say, you go girl, get those TikTok viewers over here. Now, I know this has been a long video and I'm sorry about that, but we still need to cover what this means for you guys and the creators in this space. With this change, it really is big news for creators like myself mostly. Partnered creators who have established YouTube channels that they want to stream on or try out YouTube streaming on. Because if I create videos here on this channel and tell you to go check out my Twitch stream, 
the majority of you won't leave YouTube to check it out. Because let's be real, we're all lazy as when we watch YouTube. But if you subscribe here and I go live here, well, that is a lot easier for you to see my live stream. And I'll probably grow my viewership easier as seen with Ludwig or Purplecliff coming over to YouTube. But unlike Purplecliff or Ludwig, now to do that, we don't have to burn our bridges. Twitch is saying, hey, yeah, the grass does look greener over there. Sure, you can go check it out, but you'll be back, which is amazing. And you bet you'll see me live on this channel soon, so keep an eye out. Now, of course, what about if you're not an established creator? If you don't have TikTok or YouTube? Well, first, you better be working on that if you care at all about growing in this day and age. And second, not much changes. You see, whether you stream on Twitch or whether you stream on YouTube doesn't really matter. There are huge debates about the best platform to stream on. Most people saying YouTube has better discoverability. But the reality is that if you have no videos and you aren't planning on releasing videos, YouTube discovery is actually worse than Twitch, in my opinion. Because nobody goes to YouTube in search of streamers, they go for videos. So the actual tip for this entire change should be to start uploading videos and gaining traction now. And then try out streaming on YouTube because it could be amazing for you. And every streamer out there should now be posting to TikTok and preparing to or attempting to multi-stream to it as well, especially if you want to grow in this space. Now, some people are saying this is desperation from Twitch, or it's because they're failing as a platform. And honestly, that might be true. But this move has some pretty big energy, if you ask me. It is a lot of confidence, isn't it? To say, yeah, go stream wherever you want. We know you'll be back. Our service is the best, and you'll realize that soon. Now, whether that confidence is misplaced, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. But to me, it really comes across like a power play. And if that power play and that confidence is a bluff, well, I'll let you guys know because we're gonna be live on this channel and my side channel soon to test it all out and see if streaming on YouTube with discoverable videos is the best place to grow as a content creator. Speaking of growing, if you wanna grow and start creating months worth of content in just a few hours, well, I recommend this video right here on TikTok growth. I promise it is far easier than you'd expect with no editing software required. After all, I got 2.5 million views in under two weeks from zero. Or if you prefer YouTube, check out this video on growing as a brand new YouTuber. See you guys next week. Let me know in the comments. Where are you going to be streaming from now on?